Hey there guys, this is Pharaoh2091 and welcome back to Let's Play Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Now it's been a little while since I recorded, but I believe last time we left off, we got the stunning revelation that Darpa, her name is Eve, and she is a girl that I was with um, Espella all this time when she was younger. So, it raises a lot of questions, but now we're about to hear more. Um, I feel like I'm very close to the end of the game. So hopefully this will be the final recording session. But we will see. Not hopefully in terms of like, oh, I'm, I want this game to end, but... Um, it's drawing... I feel like it's drawing near. It'll be fun. Turns out we had a surprise witness on our hands. The victim himself, the storyteller. Then again, nothing surprises me anymore. The secret behind Labyrinthia? Legendary fire, witches, magic, and finally Gazella. Veil. Oh, wait, who you said all this? <laughs> I was wondering that for a minute. Mr. Cantabella, I would like to apologize for putting too much pressure on your daughter. Hmm. <laughs> Only your words can bring her back from the brink of madness. Let her hear the truth from her own father. All according to your plan, Leighton. You've driven this fellow into a corner in order to push me to the wall. I had no other choice. This fellow, please listen to me. You haven't done anything wrong. You didn't cause that accident. You have suffered so much thinking that you are Bazella. I must take the blame for that. You, Mr. Cantabella. I sacrificed everything to make up for what I've done. But all I managed to do was inflict more pain upon others. Is that not so, Dark Law? Now that you are willing to talk, Mr. Cantabella, would you mind telling us your story? Yours, as well as the Spellas and Miss Dark Laws? Very well. This story, too, began when I was a young lad. But Newton and I were still youths, full of dreams and hope. As you already know, we discovered the underground ruins. And deep within them lay that accursed bell. The Bell of Ruin. At the time, we still lacked the knowledge to decipher any of the writings we have found there. This bell is magnificent. It's bound to make the most beautiful sound. I have an idea. Why don't we make this bell the symbol of our town? How do you propose we do, to do that? Let's build a bell tower for it, then we can ring it on special occasions. Hmm, that's not a bad idea. That is settled. When we grow up, let's do it. Okay, just don't forget about it. The two of us chose different paths in life. I studied management in London, while Newton had devoted himself to the study of the natural sciences. And then, you made a fortune following the adventure of a new anesthetic. We both got married around that time, and each of us had a daughter. You mean a spell was born shortly after your company gained funding? That's right. We eventually returned to our hometown and set, up, set about realizing our childhood dream. Having built the bell tower in the middle of the town square, we retrieved the bell itself from the underground ruins. We aspired to make it a symbol of prosperity for this un, un, unindustrialized town. The bell was to be officially displayed during the annual fire festival. It would be rung in the morning, following the night of celebration. Pardon the interruption, but at the time, were you aware of the meaning behind the bell's name? Obviously we were not. Thinking back to my ignorance at the time, my chill now runs down my spine. Newton and I went to the bell tower the day before the festival. Only one more day to go. We've waited a long time for this. That we have. This town will be no will no longer be the same after tomorrow. The bell weighed so much a ringing it was not easy. We tackled that problem by constructing a special mechanism, which we installed in the belfry. Daddy, I want to hear the bell. Can I make it ring? Daddy, please, let me ring it. 
nice fellow who was there with us was utterly enchanted by the bell. She wasn't a bad child, but she was very stubborn and would really rarely listen to me whenever she wanted something. I told her a story to try and convince her to leave the bell alone. Espella, listen carefully. You mustn't ring this bell. But why? Why can't I, Daddy? You know about Bazella, the witch. Uh-huh. She's an evil fire witch who uses magic to hurt people. If you ring this bell, Bazella will come out and possess you. Possess me? You mean I'll turn into Bazella? That's right, Espella. When Bazella possesses someone, she uses them to do terrible things. That's why you must never ring the spell, sweetheart. I understand, Daddy. There's a good girl. I mean, I'm not really sure that was the best story to tell the daughter, but it, it is going to stop her from doing something like, oh, don't do this, or well, it's actually kind of the same thing, like, don't do something bad or else the monster will get you. I mean, like, I guess it's a normal parent thing. The legend of Bazella has been passed around these parts for centuries. It probably originated from beliefs of the tribes that populated this area in the past. What I told Espella was just a silly story that I invented for the occasion. It was only meant to stop her from ringing the bell. I could not have imagined that it would have such far-reaching consequences. It's all coming back to me now. I remember that day. Huh. On the day of the fire festival, just around the time when the preparations ended and everything was about to begin. I sneaked out of our house. I took Mum's pendant with me. Your mother's pendant? Do you mean this one? Yes, it belonged to my mum. We needed to limit access to the bell, so we made two keys. We decided to make them in pendants and each gave one to the respective wives. Both are needed in order to access the belfry. I saw you and Mr. Belduke use them, so I told Eve to meet me at the bell tower. Daddy says Bazella will come out if I ring the bell, but if I do it just a little... I want to try it while the festival is going on. I hope Eve doesn't forget her mum's pendant. So it's just as I thought. Miss Darklaw, you are Mr. Balduke's daughter. Which I assumed from when we found out her name was Eve. I'm like, Eve who? Pretty sure that, yep. Huh. <laughs> well done, Inquisitor. I was almost afraid he would have failed to make that connection. What in the... This is too much for one day! Okay... Order! Order in the court! Lady Darklaw, you mean to say that you're Sir Balduke's daughter? Yes, my real name's Eve Balduke. I'm the alchemist's daughter. Th this is unbelievable! I also sneaked out of my house that evening, clutching my mother's pendant in my hand. I did just as you asked me to, did I not, Espella? Espella, my mum's going to be so angry if she notices I took the pendant. Don't worry so much. I just really want to ring that bell. I want to hear it. I rang the bell, against my father's wishes or warning, and so Bazella possessed me. Because of me, the town, and everyone in it. They're all gone. No! It's not your fault! Stop blaming yourself! Supposedly, the former inhabitants of this area also used to fall unconscious upon the sound of that bell. <laughs> Perhaps they experienced a similar nightmare. It was I who brought the bell for when I entered this town. The one to blame for this calamity is not some witch, it's me! I brought destruction upon this town. I am Bazella. Espella, you're going to drive your dad crazy if you keep repeating that! Well, uh, that's not funny, but I don't know why. 
Oh, I don't want to. <laughs> Seeing you like this has given me a strong feeling of deja vu. Eve, how can you be so evil? Are you happy now? I'm afraid we're in the dark. We're in the dark as regards Mr. Starkler's sense of deja vu. Only four people survived the fire. Only four? Spell and Eve were in the Belfry, and the only two residents who did not participate in the festival, Newton and I. And where were you at the time, if you'll permit my asking? We were investigating those fateful ruins. That's why we didn't notice anything until it was too late. It was getting near the time at which we planned to ring the bell, so we headed toward the town. Then, we saw it. The town had been burnt to ashes, the air shimmering from the heat. That's... that's too awful for words. We searched for survivors, sick with anxiety. Eventually, we found our daughters in the bell tower. Spella was all unresponsive, like a doll. Eve was crying at her side. A relief at having found them vied with terror caused by the disaster. The worst night of my life ended, pierced with the right first rays of sunshine. But then, it seemed this Spella was almost lost to us. We had lost her to Bizella, already lost. She wouldn't speak, eat, or even leave her room. She thought she was Bazella and that she, can, she had destroyed the town. I couldn't get that out of her head. What she saw from that bell tower must have been so terrifying. But it wasn't shock from what, from what she had seen. My own words have put her in that state. Had I only not told her that stupid story! We had been grasping at straws, trying to find a way to save the spell's mind. But, whatever we did, her eyes would remain impassive and empty. In the end, I came upon a certain idea that offered us a glimpse of hope. What was it? The surprise! It's too much for my aging heart! I believe I may not I may know what it is. It was the only way to get through to the little Spella. Inquis Inquisition? What are you talking about? What was Mr. Cantabella's idea of having saving his daughter from insanity? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the first story. A handmade picture book about witches found in Spell's room. So, yeah, I, I kind of forgot how the story went exactly, but this could have calmed it down. Have a look. Have a look. We discovered this in the Spell's room. Um, and that is... It's a handmade picture book. The illustrations and handwriting are truly exquisite. That's the first story I wrote. I made it for a spell after that dreadful fire. Oh, the storyteller's first story! It was but a simple children's story. The plot was very straightforward. The townsfolk joined forces to banish the evil witches who serve Azella. Spella, do you understand now? You aren't Bazella. Bazella is somewhere out there, sending out other witches to do bad things to the people of our town. Witches, magic, the town perishing in flames. The spell was mentally broken, and I couldn't get through to her any other way. I talked to her as if magic and witches were real, avoiding any mention of that life. Daddy. The witch is real. The spell spoke to me for the first time in so many days. I was beyond myself with joy and replied without thinking. Oh, yes they are. They're hiding in the town, among the people. But it's just a fairy tale. I was desperate. I feared she would close herself off to me again. Now, in hindsight, I see what an utter fool I was. I made an irreversible mistake yet again. No, it's not. Everything your daddy writes comes true. The bad witches will get their comeuppance. I will write a story about it. 
And so, I wrote another story for my daughter. A story about mischievous witches getting caught. This time, I had the story acted out in front of Espella. You had it acted out! Back then, I wasn't the only one tormenting myself over the mental state of my daughter. Newton was going through hell, too. His own daughter had been barely scarred by the event. It's not right, Eve. My father and I required, repaired a building that had survived the fire and continued to live in this town. Espella wasn't even able to leave her room. We couldn't leave her behind when she needed all the help she could get. Mr. Cantabella showed us his book one day. Then, he made an unusual request of us. I'd like to make this story real. Would you be willing to help me do so? To our surprise, he wasn't entirely serious. Seeing that, we gladly offered our help. A story about evil doing witches getting caught and punished. Bezella, the source of them all. Were you paying attention, Espella? Witches got what they deserved, and peace has been restored to the town. Espella smiled at the end. Then. She whispered to herself. It wasn't me. When I saw her smile, I felt as if something broke inside me. I couldn't afford to let her be sad again. Maybe if Pizella were to exist in this town, this fellow would stop thinking she herself harbored a great witch. I continued writing stories about witches. Eve and I would act them out for Espella. Gradually, the number of characters in my stories increased. That was, of course, largely due to the ongoing reconstruction of the town. How much reconstruction? It wasn't anything on a big scale. I simply paid people to move in and act out their roles. But... I began to think that I would need more than that. The story had to be real. To make a lie seem true, you resorted to even more lies. Yes, I was certain that that was the only way. How did I do so? I remembered about Newton's research. He was working on certain medicine. It was a kind of tranquilizer made from local plants that he was testing at the time. But it was difficult to put into practical use. The substance had a danger of causing unconsciousness and hypnosis. Well, I can see that could, how that could be abused and to cause much harm, supposing it fell into the wrong hands. At the same time, it was just what I needed for my ambitious project. I contacted the government, and that was the beginning of what came to be known as Project Labyrinthia. A town with human test subjects, all in the state of long-term hypnosis. You devised that plan solely for the sake of your daughter. Yes. We acquired a land which had been laid to waste by the fire. The new town was slowly becoming populated. Gradually, the rules of Labyrinthia were established. It was to be, be a town where magic and witches were a reality to the residents. All of this where it was possible thanks to the drug. The test subjects were exposed to it through the ink used to pen the story, right? That's right. It was a dangerous drug developed by Newton. About ten years have passed since then. Even now, the town continues to change. I'm not even sure what to say. He really loves his daughter that much, though. I mean, I guess... But why... the Eve... Her being kind of evil, though. I don't know what's up. Project Labyrinthia. And all this done for one girl. Spell was able to be herself when she lived within my story. Oh, the irony of it. Only within a world in which Bezella was real could Spell's met tragic memories be sealed. All this while, Eve was assisting me. I was... 
the first shade. <gasps> as soon as the story began, I disappeared from the scene. If the speller was to see some magic, then someone had to don this robe. That's the robe of visibility! I gave the speller new memories so that she could live in this town with everyone else. I also sealed the memory of her friend Eve. What? My existence was too strongly connected to the memory of the fire. Afterwards, I returned as, as Darklaw, a stranger to Espella. But even if you were doing this for Espella's sake, that's just going too far! I made that choice. I do not regret the past ten years. Meanwhile, my father was su supporting Labyrinthia from behind the scenes, in his own way. Do you mean his contr contributions as an alchemist? My father's knowledge of medicine was in indispensable for this town to function. The hallucinogenic ink was my father's work as well. So it was. Newton and Eve sacrificed more than ever anyone else for the sake of this bella in this town. I will be forever indebted to them. We wanted to save Espella, just like you. But then, there's still something I don't understand. Why were you trying to destroy this fake world? In the end, you chose to betray Espella and Mr. Cantabella. Oh, but I've told you already, have I not? It was your revenge against Mr. Cantabella for choosing to end the story, correct? I wonder whether that was a true reason. Uh, professor? Would Miss Belduc really betray them merely because she did not want the story to end? I dare say there was another, considerably more important reason. She had another reason? No need to frown in dismay, Mr. Wright. Please leave this to me. Well then, let's hear what the Inquisition has to say. What other reason led the witness to betray Mr. Cantabella? Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and say her father committing suicide. I mean, that's rough. And it was fairly recent, too. Have a look. This letter was Miss Belduc's real motive. What is this? I think I've seen it before. That's the letter written by Mr. Belduc for Mr. Cantabella. It's also Mr. Belduc's suicide note. My dear friend. I hope you can forgive me for leaving this world of my own will. What I have done cannot be forgiven. I can never escape from it. Something was tormenting Mr. Balduk. It became too much for him to bear and drove him to suicide. These past ten years, I thought I thought I thought Father was glad to be helping Cantabella. But little did I know. He was suffering in terrible anguish all that time. Hm. Cantabella twisted the lives of so many people for the sake of his daughter. Was the story not but a glorified lie, stripping so many what little happiness they had? All those ten years, father was racked by a crushing sense of guilt. His agony cul culminated in the incident of three months ago. Mr. Belduc's death. Before Labyrinthia was created, certain things had to be concealed in order to seal Espella's memories. Had she seen them, she would have remembered. They were simply too dangerous to her. To her. One of them was me. Espella's friend Eve had to be reborn as a shade and disappear into the forest. The next thing was the bell tower. I see. Had she seen it, it would have been certain to stir up those traumatic memories. Memories of the legendary fire. 
The only way to prevent that was to erase the Bell Tower for Labyrinthia. But how could you do that? Using the same method as with this robe. The robe of invisibility? In short, we covered up the tower with a huge robe. Although it wasn't as easy as it sounds. In other words, the Bell Tower had been there all this time. Only, the townspeople couldn't see it. Is that correct? Indeed. I... But I don't know what to say! At any rate, the situation changed due to the lightning strike three months ago, did it not? I was about to say, it, it, the, the road caught on fire? <laughs> uh... Yep, there we go. Well, I don't know. How come nobody, like... It was like, kind of like in the middle of the town, the square. I mean, couldn't people just accidentally bump into it? <laughs> or maybe I'm thinking about it wrong, I don't know. It was the most unfortunate accident. The lightning set the bell tower's cover on fire. That cover was quickly consumed by flames, revealing that abominable bell tower. The beginning of all of this, the bell of ruin, appealed before us. It was mockery of our efforts. That tower emerging from the flames. It must have seemed like a sign of divine anger to Mr. Belduc. Sign that no matter how you attempt to conceal your sins, the truth will eventually flow up to the surface. Having realized this, Father chose death. He was such a kind-hearted man. I didn't have an inkling what he had been going through. To him, the participation of Labyrinthia's people within, the, within this project was not voluntary. Even though they had, they, had them, they, they had themselves signed the contract, I believe he felt those people were being deceived. Father took his life because of you, Cantabella. Well, this is rough. Now you know why I did what I did. I lost my father three months ago. That day, my revenge began. Your revenge? The first step of my plan was to rewrite the story. What did you say? As President of Labrellum Inc. Incorporated, you had to spend most of your time in London. Over the past few years, you were coming to Labyrinth only for the parades. So naturally, I knew you, you would never notice it if the story was slightly changed. Well, that explains it. I couldn't help thinking that there was something strange going on. Mr. Cantabell is the spell's father, after all. He wouldn't have made a spell a witch in his story. A spell was a witch. When did that happen? Man, you missed out quite a bit. <laughs> How could you have known, after all? Let me fill you in on the details. A spell had already been tried once within the witch's court. Impossible. Why? How could you? You knew the risk that I could what I would carry. Look at you. What a fine author of that grand story you are. You left all the work in Labyrinthia to me. Meanwhile, you were making millions for yourself in London. What a pathetic excuse for a father. You didn't even notice that your precious little spell was in such danger. <sighs> Miss Belduke. Why did you do that to a spell? Do you even need to ask? I did it to unlock her memories. You mean... When the legendary fire took place, Espella was so traumatized that, that she closed herself off to the world. We were just little girls then. That tragic accident was too much for us to handle. This fictitious town was created as a facade to keep the truth away from Espella. But the weight of all these lies led my father to his suicide. Despite that, the person responsible for all this carried on as if nothing had happened. I couldn't forgive him. As Belduc's bereaved, bereaved, bereaved daughter, daughter, I had to have my revenge against both Cantabellas. Judge, this is the whole truth. Now you know that I true identity of Pizella. Objection. Okay. 
You say this is the whole truth, but is this re is that really the case? Professor? What are you going on about now? We've been provided with a clear picture of what happened to Espella so long ago. Nevertheless, we haven't yet heard your testimony. Don't be ridiculous. This will be the last testimony in this trial. Tell us about the night of the legendary fire. I request that you tell us your story. Who do you think you are, Inquisitor? I am merely one of the supporting characters within this tale. However, I am very much interested in the truth. This has been a very long trial, of which this trial shall of which this shall be the last interrogation. The court demands that a single other witness of the legendary fire provide us with her testimony. Very well. There is only one truth. Nothing can change that. And we'll hear that truth in the next episode, guys. So, as usual, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for Let's Play Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. I'll see you guys later.